let's learn how to use .env files within your Go project. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Morrison. I'm a full stack developer and content creator here on YouTube, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Today, we're gonna to take a look at how you can use .env files to inject environment variables inside of your Go projects running in locally on your computer. This is all gonna be done using the go.env package, which can be used to inject uh, environment variables using the standard .env file name, as well as alternate file names for various stages of your development pipeline. If you like this kind of content, whether it's about full stack uh, software development or serverless development or DevOps content, which is uh, typically what I do here, uh, do me a favor, uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. And uh, let's take a look at the code. Okay, so I've got the code for the Go Discord bot that we've been building in the series so far up. And what I want to call out is on line 18, we've added in this long token, this long string here that is actually the token, the authentication token that our bot uses to connect to Discord servers. Anyone who has this token can essentially write code to um, to mimic our bot, to basically impersonate our bot, and then they would also be getting the messages uh, for any server that our bot is joined to. So we definitely don't want this information to be committed alongside the repository when it gets pushed up to GitHub. To prove that this does work, just because we're gonna be making some changes here, I'll type in go run main.go, and we should get a message that says the bot is up and running. Yeah, the bot is online. Uh, that means that the code was able to successfully connect to Discord servers and authenticate with it. Now, we don't um, we don't want that in there, but we also can't remove it. We need a way to reference it. So this is where we're going to move this specific token into a .env file locally that's not going to be committed alongside the repository. So the function in order to get the, to get any information out of an environment variable um, is going to be os.getenv oops, os.getenv, and then we pass in the name of that environment variable. In this case, we'll, we'll name the variable bot underscore token. Uh, now we haven't done anything to import this environment variable into our code yet, so it's not gonna work. And we could say log, well, just to show this, we'll do log.println, bots token is, and then I'll add a plus, and then we'll put our token there. And then typically you would also do, you'd add the token to the end. So this would essentially create the same string that we had before with bot space, and then that long random string, which is our token. Now, if I run this again, we can see the bots token is, and there's nothing afterwards. That's because that environment variable does not exist on my system or within the project, and the connection to Discord servers actually failed. So now let's go ahead and install that package that's going to let us um, that's going to let us import that variable from the .env file. We'll say uh, go get github.com forward slash joho forward slash go.env and hit enter. Okay, it looks like that package was added, so we can close this out again. And then let's go ahead and create a new file in here called .env. We will create an entry in here for bot underscore token. And we'll set this equal to the value of our token. Now, the last thing we need to do is inside of this main function right at the top, we need to say go.env.load. And this is going to load the default uh, entry, which is that .env file. Now, if I go ahead and run the command again for main.go, we can see the bot's token is now that specific value that we set it to. And the bot is back online. Now it's also very common when you're working within these within projects in multiple environments that you could have a .env dot dev or staging or test, let's say. So if we change the name of this to go env.dev and we run this again, we will see that the bots token is blank again, essentially because we haven't informed the go.env load function which file it should look for. It defaults to .env with nothing else, but we can also come in here and specify a string of .env.dev and save this again. Now, when we run the function again after specifying the exact file that we want it to load in, it pulls in that token just the same without, uh, without looking for that default.env file. And then the last thing you'd want to do for good measure is we want to exclude this. I'm going to go ahead and undo this and we're going to change this back to .env since we don't want to, since we're basically just going to be working with the .env file for the remainder of the series. I'm going to add a .git ignore and then we'll add .env as an entry there. And you'll notice on the left-hand side of my terminal, this .env file, it was originally set to untracked. It now went to this uh, kind of gray name with no indicator next to it. That's because Git is now going to ignore this file, which means it's not going to be committed alongside a repository. And um, that is essentially how you would use the, the go.env package in order to prevent secrets from ending up inside of your repository. 
After watching this video, you should have a good understanding on how to use .env files within your Go projects. If you enjoy this video, do me a favor, give it a like, share it with your friends, and uh, if this is the kind of content you're into, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.